How's it going, folks? Corey Harback here for yet another riveting episode of Drum and Stray Superior. Um, you may be asking yourselves at this point, why is it so short? I have been up for 20 hours, so I figured this was probably the best time for me to film an episode this short. Um, and I've been meaning to film this ep episode for a while, so I, why not? Why not today? So today's episode is going to be about tonal and envelope um, modifications. Basically just tonal shaping, uh, changing the tuning and pitch, and the um, attack, decay, sustain, release envelope of the drum sounds you're using. So let's get started here. I've already opened up um, Superior Drummer here and the, loaded up the default kit. So let's, let's uh, take a look at what I've got here. Let's load up that other head uh, for the toms. And let's just for the hell of it open up a, another ride. Alright. <clears throat> so, first off with the kick, I've described in previous videos that I just really don't like that at all. Um, so, what if maybe I. Yeah, let's, let's just use that for now. And a different snare. That should be about all we need to modify here. Now, down here where it says pitch, we're just going to play this a few times until we find a pitch that we like. Kind of like seven. Um, but when I click it like that, I definitely notice um, because I'm not shaking my my ears, you know, vibrating with the energy of playing that that note. That it just doesn't have any any sub frequencies or bass in there at all. So what I can do to fix that, well, first click fix here, and it'll just fix that into position, so that we don't have to constantly look at that red uh, red light. Now, in a previous video, I went over X drums. So let's say I opened up Metal Machinery, uh, kick, and reset all the mics. I see kick one sub. That's perfect for our purposes right now. I think that one's probably best for us. Uh, now let's see what the level's at if we go over here. Okay, so that's quite low. Let's see how that sounds now. Okay, that's not bad. Let's merge that with all our kicks. I don't notice a huge difference there, so what I usually do to solve that is just use some compression here. Now because the ratio is still fairly high, actually I might raise it even further just at random. Give it a quick attack here so that it pretty much instantly starts compressing it regardless of, um, of how long it's been playing the release fairly slow because you know honestly a, a kick drum sound does not last 300 milliseconds but 385 you know it's just going to be a constant compression really if we're constantly playing it um, threshold set fairly reasonably but uh, that's just the point at which it starts compressing uh, in terms of volume We could definitely increase the makeup gain a little here. Let's try a bit extreme here. Three decibels.
It's not bad. Could use a bit more. A bit more sub. So let's uh, let's move that compressor over here. Filter out everything above a certain point. Continue compressing that and making up the gain there. And that should be about right here. But as I increase it more, I start to notice that it tails off just a little too long. So that's where the envelope is going to come in. So right now it's disabled, so I'm going to enable it so I can hear the differences I'm making. So it's not going to be too slow, too too quick there. I don't actually know what I was changing there. Um, okay, let's select everything, reset, enable, and. Not bad so far. Um, honestly, could be better, but you know, for artificially combining the sub bass and bass frequencies of one kick drum with uh, the nice uh, pitch of another one, you know, we're not doing too bad so far. So let's use um, some more examples with that envelope. So let's say I wanted a bit more of a a building sound to the kick drum. Actually, let's 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 find a groove where I'm confident we'll find almost nothing but a kick drum. Let's just listen to the kick. Now let's listen to the whole thing combined there. It's weaker, but in some contexts that could be better. Um, in this one, definitely not. <laughs> so don't worry too much about that. But yeah, that's just one of many examples I could give. You know, if you wanted to make it sound like your, your cymbals were gated, you could even do that. Honestly, not a bad choke sound either. Da -da -da. A tom, I guess, could be good. You can make some really nice electronic or ambient uh, signals out of all these. Um, furthermore, I was going to go over hi-hats. All right, so let's make a nice open hi-hat sound. And then let's Filter the envelope up here. Almost makes a good, nice uh, reverse symbol effect, but uh, 
yeah, I figured I'd share that with you guys. It's something I've used before in some recordings, uh, mostly just for special effects, you know, noise uh, filters and those kinds of things. But honestly, I, th I think it could be useful for any number of things. If you don't like the um, the attack of a certain sample, move the attack forward, and uh, and you can you can get some decent uh, sounds out of it. So hope that helps. Look forward to next video when I go over a bunch of types of processing. So that's post processing anywhere from you know equalization, compression, transient designing, filtering, uh, gating. You know, we'll be going over lots of that, and that's going to be a very meaty episode. Uh, trust me. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, have yourself a great week. Until then.